Hello, my name is Dave Kunst, and I'm the first person verified to have circled the land mass of the Earth on foot, with the exception of the oceans. And I'd like to share with you one of mankind's most incredible adventures. On the night of October 21st, 1972, a shot rang out from the Murder Gorge area of a country called Afghanistan. With deadly accuracy, a bandit's bullet smashed through my chest. Before that rifle night was over, two more shots left for Brother John Lyon dead at my side, ending his search of life. But it all started with a fantastic, incredible idea to walk around the world. Now, I used to live right there in Wasika, Minnesota. That's where I got the idea from my best friend to walk around the world. And of course, I had some ideas of my own. I was thinking of driving from Minnesota down the tip of South America or driving across Australia. My friend said, nah, it's been done before. Why don't you do something nobody's ever done? I said, what's that? What has been done? He said, walk around the world. I said, don't be silly. How can you walk around the world? There's water. Boy, well, laughed at me and told him if I tried walking in water, I'd get my shoes wet. But I could walk the land part of the earth in a circle. If I did that, I'd get my name in the Guinness Book of World Records. Well, today, of course, if you look at the Guinness Book of World Records, Ripley's Believe It or Not, the BBC Record Book, the World Book Encyclopedia, your book of 76, you'll find my name there as the first person verified to have circled the land mass of the earth on foot. And I mean, what an incredible idea. Right away, I knew I was going to do it. I mean, think of it. Here's a chance to see the whole world to have an adventure, an experience, an education, prove that mankind can do anything no matter what, even walk around the world, and all I had to do was start walking. I didn't have to learn how to fly, I didn't have to learn how to sail. With two legs, I knew I could walk around the world. And when I told my brother John I was going to the University of Minnesota at that time, first thing he said, we're gonna do it, aren't we? And I said, yes, indeed, we're gonna do it, but we have to commit ourselves and set our goal right this moment, because lots of people get ideas. Some people even come up with great ideas, but most people, they just say, someday, 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 they never do it. That wasn't going to happen to us. We set the date, we're going to walk out of Wasika, Minnesota in six months, and ready or not, we're going on a great adventure to walk the world. And we're pretty excited. We started telling people. Did you know most people didn't believe us? They thought we'd quit. They thought our legs would give out. They didn't think we'd made it across the oceans. And then we met a nice lady who was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the time, and not only did she like the idea of walking around the world, I think she would have liked to have gone along, but she came up with another great idea. She said, how are you guys going to carry your equipment? Well, we had thought about that. I looked at my brother John and I said, well, I suppose we're going to have to carry a backpack. The lady said, that is ridiculous. You guys are going to carry a pack in your back for four years? What you need is a mule, a horse, or a donkey. Then you won't just be two guys walking down the road. The animal carries all your equipment and people will see that you're not hitchhiking, which was very important and a great idea. So the City Fathers of Wasika, Minnesota gave us our first little pony mule. We had a name the mule contest and Willie Maggot became the name of our first mule. And I say first mule because this is really a true story about three brothers, David, that's me, and my brother John, who started with me from Wasika, Minnesota on June 20th, 1970, and my brother Peter, who lived out in California at the time. And, of course, we kind of left Peter out of it. And John and I, we got together and started to walk. But you'll see that Peter got involved later on. It's also a true story about four mules. Mules, of course, are like horses. And our first mule we called Willie Make It. And it was Willie Make It Too, Will Willie Make It Too, and Willie Will Make It. It's also a true story about an Australian school teacher named Jenny. A 200-year-old wooden wheel turkey wagon that was used just for carrying our things and also to sleep in. Kind of like a home on wheels. We christened it the USA Turk Machine. Now, one other thing, of course, we had to do is get a map to know where we were going to actually walk around the world. We decided we'd start in Minnesota because that's where we live. And the idea here is to circle the entire land mass of the Earth on foot, not to skip one single step. Walk up and touch the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the Indian Ocean on both sides. So, first off, we'd walk to New York City, about 1,320 miles. Then we'd fly across the Atlantic Ocean over here to Europe. Portugal, Europe's most western country, we touch the water and then we walk all the way across Europe and Asia and India to the Indian Ocean. Two years, 8,000 miles of walking. And these are the countries that walked across. Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria, Turkey, and yes indeed we did try to go across Russia. But at that time, and I don't even think today, the Russians will allow two Americans to walk border to border across their country. They denied us permission to walk across their country when we were in Anchorage, Turkey. Well, then we tried to go across China. But here again, the Chinese would not allow two Americans to walk border to border across their country. They denied us permission to go across their country when we were in Islamabad, Pakistan. So instead, we walked across Iran, Afghanistan, Pakistan, and northern India to Calcutta. And it was there in Calcutta, India, we found out that we would not be able to walk a little country below China called Burma. The Burmese would not allow anybody to walk all the way across their country. And we thought it was over world walk, because if you can't walk across Russia, China, or Burma, 
there's the Indian Ocean. And if you're not going to skip anything, well, we thought it was over in Calcutta, India. But it was there in India we met two Australians. They said, you Yanks want to walk around the world? Why not walk across the world's largest island and smallest continent, Australia? about 3,000 miles. It's actually farther than if we walked all the way from Calcutta, India, across China to Shanghai, China, and the Pacific. So we flew across the Indian Ocean, and starting at about the same latitude only in the Southern Hemisphere, we started in Western Australia and walked 3,000 miles across the outback of Australia to Sydney, the largest city in Australia on the Pacific Coast, flew across the Pacific Ocean back to the good old USA, California, Newport Beach, where I touched the water and then finished walking 2,000 miles back to where I started in Wasika, Minnesota to walk around the world. Now in all, I walked about 14,452 miles, wore out 21 pair of shoes, walked across 13 countries and four continents, taking four years, three months, and 16 days, and walking more than 20 million steps to walk around the world. Now, we had our map. We had our mules. We knew we didn't need very much money because, you see, we're not tourists. We're not going to be driving a car, so we didn't need gas or oil. We didn't have to spend money for hotels. So we knew we could get along in very little. We had about $1,500 to start on, and we thought, well, if need be, we'll work our way around the world. And so on June 20th, 1970, we're ready to walk out of town, and that's exactly what we did. We waved goodbye to our friends in Wasika, Minnesota, and we're on our way walking to New York City. And this is what we looked like when we were crossing the state of Wisconsin. Of course, that's my brother John, who started with me from Wasika, Minnesota. That's me, Dave. There's our little pony mule, Willie Macon, the first. And you notice Willie had a lot of things on her back? Well, you see, that's the idea, to save money. We were carrying tents and sleeping bags and food and cooking equipment. But you know what happened? Walking all the way from Minnesota to New York City, 1,320 miles, we hardly ever used a tent, very seldom even cooked a meal. Because we found out Americans love an adventure. If they can't go on an adventure, they're willing to help two guys, like those people from Wisconsin. The lady who owned the Boston store spotted us walking by. Hey, what are you guys doing with that mule? We stopped and told her the story of our adventure. She invited us into the store to take anything we wanted free of charge. The kids went inside and got us something cold to drink. The farmer there put us up for the night. That young man who read about us in the Wisconsin newspapers parked his car, put on a backpack, and walked with us for three days. Of course, then he had to go back to work. John and I and Willie make it. We kept right on going, and we made it to Pennsylvania, USA. That's when my brother Pete showed up over here in the striped shirt. Now, Pete lived out in California. He had a good job. He really didn't want to take off for four years of his life to walk around the world, but he didn't want to be left out. So he got on a bus and bust all the way across the United States, hitchhiked some, in fact, to Pennsylvania, caught up with John and I, and walked with us for three days. Of course, little did my brother Peter know then that two years later, when my brother John was shot and killed by bandits in Afghanistan, my brother Peter would take my brother John's place and help me, Dave, make it the rest of the way around the world. In Pennsylvania, we had the terrific time for three days, the three brothers walking together. Then Pete had to head back home to California, and John and I and Willie make it. We kept right on walking, and we made it all the way to the Atlantic Ocean, New York City, Statue of Liberty. And you notice my brother John, that's me, Dave, we went right down and touched the water. That was very important because we wanted to say we walked every inch of the land surface of this earth in a continuous connecting circle from Wasika, Minnesota back to Wasika, Minnesota, with the exception of the oceans. And that's why we went down and touched all three oceans on both sides. Willie make it made it to New York City. Of course, we didn't have the money to take Willie across the Atlantic Ocean, so we just sent her back to Minnesota. There she was well taken care of by a farmer who had 22 kids and two ponies. John and I got on an airplane, flew across the Atlantic Ocean, arrived in our first foreign country, Portugal. I mean, the Portuguese were absolutely marvelous. First off, they gave us a little donkey and a cart. But the thing is, we didn't want a cart, we didn't want a donkey. I mean, look at my legs, they're longer than the donkeys. By the time we got from Minnesota to New York City, we knew a little pony mule was a little bit too slow for the two of us. And so here we knew we were going to have a problem, and certainly we didn't want that cart. But you know, the Portuguese are wonderful people, and we had a language problem. And we were going to sit there and argue with them when they had decided they were going to give to us this donkey and the cart all decorated with our names, filled with wine and cheese and food. And they had the local Portuguese girls dressed in traditional costumes riding donkeys to give us a nice send-off. No way. We put on our typical Portuguese caps and we started walking with that donkey. But you know what? That donkey was so slow it took us three days to walk into the first major city, Lisbon, Portugal. And we should have been there in about three or four hours. We had to push that donkey cart up every little nook and crook of a hill. So finally arriving in Lisbon, Portugal, Dr. Souza, the tourist minister at the time, he understood. He kind of chuckled a little bit when I told him, please take back this little donkey and cart or we'll never make it around the world. And he did just that and presented us with a great, big, wonderful, lovable Portuguese army mule. That big, wonderful mule from Portugal we called Willie Make It Too. And Willie Make It Too was a super mule. She walked with John and I for two years, 8,000 miles across Europe and Asia, over high mountain country, across hot desert country. I mean, we probably wouldn't have made it without that wonderful mule from Portugal we called Willie Make It Too. As a matter of fact, 
That mule was a survivor. Some of the countries I walked across, the people were so poor that when we ran out of food for Willie, we couldn't even buy food for our animal because the people didn't have enough food for their own animals. Willie would eat the bark right off the trees. Definitely a super mule from Portugal. The picture, by the way, was taken by my brother John of Willie and I in Lisbon, Portugal, the capital of that country. And things were different in Portugal. I mean, John and I were spoiled Americans. Walking across the USA, five changes of wash and wear, no problem. When our clothes got dirty, we'd go to a laundromat. But in Portugal, where most people didn't even have a washing machine, if we want to clean clothes, we had to do like Portuguese washwomen. Get on the river, wash our clothes, hang them up in the trees to dry, and it wasn't very much fun for two spoiled Americans. But I found out something about Americans when I'm walking around the world. We like to have things, but we can get along without, if need be. In this case, we had to get along without, and we did just fine. But I'll tell you something, when we found the washing machine, we forgot about the river, and we used the washing machine. Of course, when we're walking across Portugal, we did see the world's most unusual sight, in a way, in my opinion, of the world that I saw. We were invited to the Chapel of Death in Evora, Portugal. Down in the basement of the Chapel of Death in Evora, Portugal, we found the walls, the pillars, the floors, and the ceilings plastered with the skulls and bones of dead monks and nuns. And I mean, it was quite an eerie sight. Then we crossed into Spain. And of course, near Badajoz, crossing into Spain, uh, we walked past many, many, many little villages like this one. You can see my brother John and Willie make it. Always the tallest building was the church steeple. Always the villages were surrounded by olive trees and cork trees and reddish brown soil. People very friendly, wanting to help us out. Of course, we did have a language problem. And that became very evident when we got closer to Valencia, near the Mediterranean sea coast. We started to see sheep herders and goat herders. I mean, we wanted to communicate. We wanted to talk with people, but definitely language a major problem. Because you see, John and I, we could only speak and understand English. And of course, in this case, the Spanish sheep herder, you know, he didn't speak English. And we wanted to communicate a little bit, so we found out the camera was a good way. Take a picture. When I got out the camera, I mean, look at this guy. He got a smile on his face, stood up real straight, called his dog over. Loved to have his picture taken. So that was a good way of communicating with people when we're walking around the world. Although I must say that in some countries later on, in the Muslim countries, in some areas, of course, the people are very superstitious, different culture, different religion, believe in the evil eye, and you start pointing that camera, you could be in trouble. So you have to be a little bit careful later on. But here in Portugal and Spain, terrific way of communicating with people. Then we walked into Barcelona, and there the tourist bureau was absolutely marvelous. They put John and I up in a fine hotel, and finally Willie Makin got a fine place to stay. Because up to that time, Willie stayed outside, she'd stayed in chip, chicken coops, she'd stayed in stables. But here in Barcelona, Willie stayed at the Bull Ring in Barcelona, Spain, and she was well taken care of. I checked out her a few times, and she had so many oats, it's a good thing she was a mule, because a horse would have eaten himself to death. But mules are smarter than that. And then we crossed the border into France, near Port Bou. And you can see what we would do when people weren't around to help us out, or a tourist bureau didn't decide they were going to put us up in a hotel, or a mayor didn't take care of us. We'd just find a little park like we did here near Port Bou, France. We put up our tent, put our gear beside the tent, cover with a canvas, let Willie have a little grass to eat, and everything was just fine. But I must say, it was much nicer when we did meet wonderful people along the way. And near Siete, France, we met some terrific French people. And that guy was very special, because he not only spoke his language, he also spoke English. He read about us in the French newspapers, spotted us walking by. Hey, you 